might feel like that's the end of the story. The deal's been closed, we're good to go. But we're actually just getting started here because the goal of this pitch was to get a foot in the door uh, to land this gig. The gig has not been landed yet. I now needed to send over some topic ideas that confirmed I knew what I was doing and was worth you know, taking the time to commission a piece, even with no monetary requirement. Again, that time requirement, that you know, the energy of working with a writer who has not demonstrated an ability to write this type of content. So I, I needed the topic ideas to be on point. Um, and then obviously after that, I needed to deliver an actual, you know, great article that they wanted to run. This episode is sponsored by Copy AI, a toolkit that helps writers, marketers, and freelancers skip writer's block completely and quickly create first draft copy for themselves and their clients. If you'd like to get a 30-day free trial, head on over to copy.ai backslash Jacob. Now, keep in mind at this point, I was not a subject matter expert on the marketing topics that were being covered on this blog. I was just getting into the SEO and marketing and writing spaces. Um, and my firsthand experience was very thin. But in my mind, this was just another challenge to lean into. Um, my goal was not to go spin some content or rewrite something I found somewhere else. My goal was to figure out where can I add something to the conversation despite not having firsthand experience. So I began looking through some of the content that was on this blog and asking myself, where can I bring a different angle to the discussion using data or research um, or something where I can do some legwork and provide the value through that rather than through, you know, the firsthand experience or insights, which I did not have. And so I noticed as I was looking through a lot of this content that best practices was this really common theme. Everywhere I looked, it was best practices this and best practices that. Everywhere I look, it's Betty White this and Betty White that. Finally, a kid who's not talking about Betty White. Of course I follow him. And it sort of struck me that I bet these best practices aren't actually working for everyone. And this gave me kind of a cool idea. I thought, what if we did a blog post that outlined a bunch of the commonly held, very universally agreed upon best practices, and then highlighted examples where someone had success breaking the best practice, sort of as a reminder that best practices are just best practices. They're just general ideas that tend to work more often than they don't. They are not gospel, and you can't assume that every best practice is going to work for your business. So again, this is something that did not require me to bring any firsthand experience or insight to the table. Um, I was simply bringing a different angle to a popular point of discussion and then doing some, you know, some legwork to find examples and case studies that went against the grain and compiling those into a blog post. So I pitched this idea, they liked the idea, um, and then I went ahead and wrote it. And the great part was that writing it was relatively easy. I just had to do the work to find these case studies um, and then summarize the findings from them while comparing them against the best practice and showing that, hey, the best practice says, for example, um, never to use a slider on you know, your homepage. And yet here's an example where someone used a slider and it actually beat the performance of, you know, the previous iteration that was following the best practice. No insight required. And this turned into a pretty interesting piece that performed well um, and resulted in them bringing me on for four blog posts a month uh, on a gig that lasted for uh, between one to two years and opened up a ton of opportunities for me to write more in the marketing space. Um, really was a pivotal moment in my career. And to kind of reiterate some of the takeaways that I think are worth uh, pulling from this behind the scenes story. So first of all, this pitch came out of a daily habit that I had developed for myself where I would look through uh, a specific subset of job board listings um, and send out pitches every morning to start my day as a freelance writer. The pitch I sent was relevant to the listing, but it was a volume pitch. I spent about five minutes writing this thing. It was less than 50 words. To my memory, the blog this was for was not even included in the job description. So there was no research connected to this. It was literally just me, you know, making a blind pitch and trying to lean into a disadvantage by saying, hey, I know you're going through a bunch of applications right now. I'm going to make this super short and simple for you. 
Here's my most relevant example. Would love to write for you. Super simple, super straightforward. Did not volunteer my shortcomings. Um, did not belabor the point and go into all this irrelevant information. Presented my sample, moved on. The next takeaway is that when they followed up by requesting something I didn't have, rather than panicking, rather than trying to persuade them that I can actually, you know, do writing I've never done before, I leaned into the challenge yet again and I said, hey, let me make this as risk-free as possible for you. Let me take on the risk because I believe in myself and I think I can do a great job for you. Third, when they accepted that proposal and asked me to send some topics, I spent some time to think about what would genuinely be a great fit for the site. I knew what their domain was at that point, um, and I looked through their blog. I looked through other blogs in the space to think through what is a topic that would be a really good fit uh, for this website is not something they've covered a hundred times, you know, from the editor's perspective would be like, oh yeah, that's something I'm excited about. I really spent some time to think through that. This is where I put the time in because at this point I had the green light to actually send them something. It wasn't like I'm just, you know, blind firing something to a bunch of different people. We're in the conversation. I have the green light to send topics. So I, I put the time in here at this point to really do my best job of sending the most exciting topic that I could come up with. And finally, in creating that topic and in delivering that piece, I didn't try to fake expertise. Um, I didn't regurgitate other content. I approached this with the goal of genuinely providing value to the conversation by delivering what I could deliver, which was not expertise, which was not insight, which was not opinions. It was simply legwork and research. So I hope all those takeaways were helpful. You can take the same approach today. Maybe instead of a job board, it's setting up something like TweetDeck and looking through Twitter conversations connected to the space that you're in, looking for opportunities where people are asking for writers, looking for places where people are seeking help with their business. The details of how you might go through something like this are gonna look a little different today, possibly. You could absolutely still land something from a job board. Um, but the details may be different, but the approach and the principles we discussed in this video uh, should be helpful. I hope these takeaways will help you land your own gigs, uh, particularly over the next few months. This is such a good time to be pitching. Over the years where I spent 100% of my time freelancing, December and January were my biggest sales months of the year. It's when I landed the most gigs. This is a great time to be pitching. Um, so I hope that's encouraging to you. Hope it's helpful. Um, hope everyone has a great holiday season and I will catch you guys in the next episode.